Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me. We'll give uh, parents, mums and dads, uh, maybe uh, a minute or so to join the breakout room connected to the secondary curriculum at Orchard. And uh, then I'll begin my presentation followed by some questions. I think we should make a start and begin. As Bipasha mentioned, uh, I've been in education for over 25 years. This is in fact my 27th year as a teacher. Uh, originally from London in the UK, I, I was at a, a school in London for 12 years or so, and then thought that I needed the next challenge and step in my career on a, and also on a personal level. It was time for a, a new opportunity and a new challenge. So I looked in the Times Educational Supplement, which is a newspaper which advertises uh, teaching jobs, educational jobs around the globe, and saw a head of sixth form position at Tangling Trust School in Singapore. And I thought I'd put in an application and lo and behold, six months later, I joined the school and also had moved country. I was at Tanglin for 15 years uh, where I held uh, the head of sixth form position. Then I became the assistant head teacher for teaching and learning. Then I became the head of upper school. And then most recently I spent five years as the deputy head academic looking for or looking after. Uh, things ranging from how we teach, uh, pedagogy, methodology, professional development to academic results and outcomes. Uh, but then again, uh, about a year or so ago, I decided I needed a new challenge and change and uh, joined and Eaton House International School Orchard as their principal. And uh, I'm often asked, or I've been asked over the last six or seven weeks or so, uh, any regrets in terms of the change? And I can happily and confidently say absolutely not. Tangden is a tremendous school in Singapore with a great reputation, outstanding outcomes, and was a fabulous place to work. Uh, but from a personal and professional level, I thought it was worth uh, a time for a new change and challenge. Uh, and very much felt that the things that I'd learned at Tanglin, uh, there was an opportunity for me to bring those to uh, Eaton House International School in a leadership role and, and the leadership role as principal. And I decided to take the plunge. And that leads me on to my first uh, point I'd like to make before we actually start the presentation, Eaton House International School Orchard does have a senior school. I've actually visited a number of our feeder schools and primary schools, uh, Eaton House Thompson, Eaton House Broderick, uh, Sentosa, and I've been meeting and talking to colleagues, parents, and even the, the students. And the awareness of, of us having at Orchard a senior school is, is almost seems a closely guarded secret. So I'm happy to say that if your son or daughter is enjoying an Eaton House education and you want that family feel, you want that culture, you want that experience to continue, it can happen at the Orchard campus. If you are new to Singapore or your son or daughter is at another international school within Singapore, but you're looking for that next step from primary to senior secondary education, what I would say is consider us seriously, because for every, in my experience, for every child that is keen on a large school, there is another child that would be very well suited to a small school. And that's exactly what we are, both in terms of the senior section as well as the primary section. Within our senior school, 11 to 18, we have approximately 110 students. There is one class per year group. Uh, we focus on personalizing education. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation and what that actually means. And again, from my experience and uh, within my 27 years of career, personalizing education has been on the agenda of every single uh, leadership team meeting or principal headmasters meeting right at the beginning of the year. And every school strives to achieve that. But in reality, it's very, very difficult, particularly for big schools. And it's not because there's not for want of trying, but it's because the numbers in those schools are so huge. For example, at Tangling Trust, uh, there are 2,800 children, uh, and that's quite a challenge. So although we drive and strive to make every educational experience personalized, it's actually quite challenging for those large schools. But for us at Orchard, it's what we live and breathe every single day. Uh, and that, from a personal point of view and professional point of view, was one of the key things that drew me 
to the position and role of principal at Orchard, knowing the children, every single child, speaking to them every single day, moving around the school and interacting with children as young as five or six, because obviously we have a primary section, as well as children from 16, 17 and 18. And my days, even in the last seven, eight weeks since I've joined, are, are very diverse. I, I was reading to the year four children this morning, but then this week I'm actually supporting and advising year 13 students, the last students in the school, on their university applications and the choices that they have to make as they leave school, because there is no year 14. And we recognise that. But the fact that there are only 15, 16 students in year 13 means that the advice, support and bespoke guidance that we can give them is second to none. If there's a challenge or an issue, we can actually follow up with the student on a one to one basis. We very much see our students as individuals uh, rather than numbers or large year groups. And I have a very clear vision for my school. And I've said this several times to my colleagues is that I would like every child known well by every single adult on campus. And those adults include our cleaning and support staff, as well as the teachers that are educating on a daily basis in the classrooms. So that's a little bit of background about me and also my vision and view for the school. And also hopefully we'll be able to establish and confirm that at Orchard Easton House does have a senior school from 11 to 18. Uh, and let me spend the next five or 10 minutes or so telling you a little bit more about the school through the presentation on the screen. So moving forward, uh, we do have an holistic curriculum. Year seven to 13, ages 11 to 18, we have a firm focus on the academics. We have a very firm focus on the pastoral. And we also have a very firm focus on co-curricular activities. Despite our city center location, and we're often described as a boutique school, but despite our city centre location, we have a very robust, productive and progressive physical education programme where the children are bused to different locations in the city centre, on the outskirts of the city centre, where they can participate in a range of activities led by a very experienced 14 physical education department. So we very much focus on that holistic approach. And, and I'm often asked, what does that actually mean? And, and for me, it's responsibility for the students both in and outside of the school. We don't just stop caring when we get to 3.30 or 3.45. We do care what the students do after school, how they get home, how they're feeling, their interactions at home with their parents, their interactions with their peers. All of that is a key part of education. And for me, having been an educator for 27 years, that's very much ingrained and embedded in my philosophy of education. It isn't just a nine to five role and job is very much a much more holistic experience that we should provide as teachers for children. And I think that's even more the case for children in an international context where there's very much a transient nature. Children come and go because mums and dads and families come and go depending on work situations and contracts. And we understand that we embrace that. And again, one of our benefits as a small school is that we can deal with that transition either into our school or out of our school, very well indeed. If you were to join us, you'd be joining an exciting learning journey. It is a learning journey. Because primary schools, preschools and primary schools at Eaton House across the world, of other international schools within Singapore, are providing, are providing young people to join a exciting opportunity. And that opportunity begins at 11. And at Eaton House Orchard, the middle school from 11 to 14 is very much the foundations of that secondary education. Again, because of the size of the school, we transition the students very effectively. The 20, 24 students we have joining us into year seven are invited into the school before the start of the school year. If they're in Singapore, they'll be invited into the school at the end of year six just to familiarise themselves with our campus, familiarise themselves with the nature of what a senior or secondary education looks like. Primary education can be quite stationary and inert to a certain extent, but part of that growing up process of the senior school movement and the secondary school movement is actually moving around our campus. And again, because we're small, the ability for us to do that well and effectively and, and perhaps provide an environment 
for the students, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, less daunting, is very effective. And certainly some of the feedback I've had and received from not only our current year seven students, but also their families and parents, is that the fact that the school is so small, the fact that everybody knows each other, has just enabled those students to settle and get into a routine where organization is important. Going to the history classroom, the geography classroom, the science lab, the music room, taking a little bit more ownership around their independence for a timetable and their homework and their home learning is important as they transition through the middle school years to the age of 14, where they will be able to make a choice of IGCSE options. Obviously, we have our core options, the non-negotiables to a certain extent, mathematics, English language, English literature, the sciences, but the students will also have a choice of a number and range of subjects ranging from humanities, such as history, geography, business, to design technology, to music, to art, to physical education, so there are a range of opportunities at GCSE level for the students to specialise and focus on their curriculum. And again, the personalised experience and advice that we will give is easier because we are small and we are personalised and we will not leave a stone unturned. If a student even wants to try a subject or a course for a week or two weeks to see if they like it or, or they're enjoying it before they make that decision, the fact that our school is small and flexible and pragmatic enables us to do so. And then moving forward, post the IGCSE years, we have year 12 to 13, ages 16 to 18, where we currently offer the IB Diploma Programme. The gold standard often in education, and in my opinion, the 27 years, the best pre-university course for 16 to 18 year olds. The students have to choose six subjects, uh, language A is often their mother tongue. Language B is a foreign language that they also take at different levels. High level, standard level, what we call ab initio, which is beginners. Individuals and societies, which is group three. And that contains subjects such as business management, economics, history, geography. Uh, the group four is the experimental sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, but subjects such as environmental systems and societies. Subjects such as design and technology and sports health exercise science also fall into group four. And then in group five, we have our mathematics courses, analysis and approaches and analysis and interpretations. And again, the students can choose which of those courses to follow depending on their interests. Very much one is, is a pure mathematics course and one is an applied mechanics statistics type course. And then in group six, we have our arts or elective subjects. So courses such as theatre, visual arts, music, film. But the students also have an opportunity to a certain extent to double up on certain subjects. For example, if the student would like to become a doctor or a vet or a dentist, then two sciences really are non-negotiable. And that group six in the IB enables the students to choose and pick a second science. And obviously the, the learning journey at Eaton House International School Orchard stops there, but it doesn't stop the learning journey for the child and the student. And very much we have a bespoke, rigorous and robust university guidance careers programme for the students in year 13, but in effect really starts at year nine and year 10, when we're asking students to consider their choices and their options that potentially influence the doors that are open to them as they leave school and join university to choose and complete their degree of choice. Year seven to nine for us is all about that smooth transition from primary to senior school. We have a broad and balanced curriculum, uh, which ensures that the students are not just prepared for IGCSEs, but they can go into those IGCSEs with a degree of confidence that they will be successful within those courses. And it isn't just about content. It isn't just about knowledge, although that forms a part of it. Uh, the concepts that perhaps they've learned through a PYP curriculum and PYP education are also built upon. Inquiry-based learning, asking the questions, supported by the content, is very much the focus of our middle years, year seven to nine or 11 to 14 years of age curriculum. Moving on. The students will be asked towards the end of year nine 
to choose IGCSE courses. And as I mentioned already, there are the core subjects there, very traditional in many respects, but also the foundations for post-16 study at the IBDP. And there's some of the optional subjects that we currently have on offer in the Orchard campus. And very much the students have an opportunity to focus and specialize so that they can maximize their outcomes and they can achieve their personal best. The small class sizes that we have enable teachers to support, develop and encourage students on a truly individual basis. And again, big schools emphasize that we live and breathe it at Orchard because our numbers are small. Currently within our year 10 class, we have 18 students spread across the range of options. So in some classes, there are only three or four students and they're supported on a very individualized and personal level by the teacher to ensure that we can support areas of development, but we can also stretch and challenge as and when needed. And then moving forward, post the IGCSE examinations in May or June of year 11, at 16 years of age, the students would then come back and join us for their IBDP courses in August of year 12. And again, this presentation and information is available on our website. It's also available post this presentation, but you can see some of the options and subjects that we currently have on offer at the Orchard campus. Mandarin Japanese alongside first language, English language and literature. We have a number of uh, native Mandarin and Japanese speakers and they would then follow this course but they also have an opportunity to choose English as a second language to develop and support their English proficiency. In addition to English as a second language, we also currently have Mandarin, Spanish, and what we call this ab initio Spanish. This is beginner Spanish. This is for students that perhaps haven't taken a Spanish course previously, but would like to continue or try that course at a level. And, and this is where the IB is unique in many respects. It offers languages at three, foreign languages at three different levels. High level, standard level, and ab initio or beginners. So within the courses, the students do have an opportunity to specialize at particular levels within the course subjects. Group three, as already mentioned, individuals and societies. We currently offer business management, geography, and history. And then there's those group four experimental sciences, the traditional biology, chemistry, and physics, supported by environmental systems and societies. And the best way to explain that is, is a combination. It's, it's, a, it's a synergy really between geography and biology, but looking at things such as global issues in many respects. And the students that have studied the course and do study the course, get an awful lot out of the conversations, the discussion, the inquiry, and the connectivity between geography and biology within environmental systems and societies. And then also in group four, we have the computer science, which very much from the IB perspective is around coding to a certain extent. Group five is the mathematics courses. And then as you can see at the bottom, there is the group six arts and elective courses. These are visual arts, music, design and technology, but also supported by chemistry, for example, which is a non-negotiable really in my experience for students who wish to become dentists, vets, or pursue a career in medicine, for example. So that they would be expected to take chemistry in group six and then perhaps biology in group four as an experimental science. And then that will be supplemented by a, a mathematics course. And um, again, to dispel a rumor, the, the IBDP, although it offers breadth, also offers that level of specialism because the students have to choose three subjects at what we call high level and three subjects at standard level. And universities, for example, often UK universities and British universities will ask for an overall point score within the diploma programme. The maximum is 45. The global average uh, ranges between 29 to 30. But the British universities, for example, will ask for three specific grades ranging from seven to one within those high level subjects as part of that unconditional offer pre the students taking their IB exams in the May of year 13. Moving forward, what makes us different? And I've mentioned this to a certain extent throughout my presentation, but on our website, we talk about being boutique, but what does that mean on a day-to-day -day basis? We offer a personalized academic and partial support program. It's personalized because we're small. We know the students. 
We can encourage them to take ownership. We can encourage them to take risks. We can encourage them to think out of the box. We want to empower them. We don't just see the students at our school as numbers that are going through a process. We see them as individuals and we want to engage with them to identify their strengths and support their areas for development. We have projects and we have the ability to offer cross-curricular projects to again encourage the students to not just think in a linear fashion, in a mathematical fashion, in a historical fashion, in an artistic fashion, but to start joining the dots between these subjects so that they grow both as individuals and as learners, but also they can develop those higher order thinking skills. And again, languages play a very big part at our Orchard campus, both from a mother tongue perspective and also a choice perspective. And languages have been proven to develop those skills such as creativity, problem solving, risk taking, thinking outside the box. So very much that is, is key to our an education at Orchard, that Eaton House difference, that Orchard difference from 11 to 18, personalized, supportive, empowering and engaging our young people. We move on and we also recognize that at year 13, education, international education within an international school in Singapore stops. There is no year 14. But for us, year 14, 15 and 16, and potentially 17 for our young people, is all about making the right choices at the right universities and providing them with the support to be able to meet those needs and do so. And certainly, again, because of our numbers are relatively small, that bespoke individualised guidance and support provides the students with an opportunity to actually get that information and make those applications that are targeted towards their ambitions, their career desires, and also an awareness of their, their academic situation, you know, reflecting and self-evaluating. Self -evaluating. I know who I am, I know my strengths, I know my areas for development, I know where I want to go, I know which university I'd like to attend, uh, whether it be in New Zealand, whether it be in Australia, whether it be in Canada, whether it be in Holland, whether it be in the UK, and I know which course I'd like to study. And again, because of the nature of the school, that personalised experience, that personalised advice is much easier to support, is much easier to regulate, is much easier to follow up on, is much easier to ensure that the children and the students are well informed to make those career and university decisions. And we do all of this in very much a safe, close-knit, caring community. We're small, we know each other, the students know me, the students know their teachers, the students know each other. And again, because of the nature of the school and the compact nature, the ability for us to facilitate those relationships and to make that happen on a day-to-day -day basis is much more effective. It's absolutely much more effective. And I'm often asked, what's the difference between my previous school and Eaton House Orchard? And it's facilitating that interaction where the communication is supported by the collaborative nature of the students, which is celebrate, which is then created and supported by collegiality of everybody within the campus, which then feeds in to our culture. What does all of this look like on a daily basis? Well, for me, I've shared the next slide with my colleagues, my senior leadership team, and also every single student in addition to their parents. For me, this is what Eaton House Orchard is all about and how it supports the overall vision, vision and mission of the Eaton House group. We are a passionate, driven and thriving learning community, which is committed to providing the most inclusive and personalized education in Singapore. Our school is an environment where every child feels safe, is happy, and has the opportunity to flourish academically, socially, and emotionally. That holistic care, that wraparound care, that isn't just about academic results, but is about the child developing on a social level and an emotion level. In this day and age, let's be honest, isn't, isn't easy, but we do a very good job of that, again, because of our numbers, because of our personalized approach. 
every child known world by every single adult. And finally, we believe in a value-based education system where the child is placed at the heart of the decision-making process. Every child should be provided with the opportunities to achieve their potential and be the best they can be. And that's my presentation for today.